Psychedelics are exploding in popularity right now with more and more people using them for self-exploration as time goes on. And for good reason. I mean, there's no denying that these substances have a profound effect on human consciousness and allows us to explore the unconscious mind in ways that we've never experienced before. Psychedelics have definitely changed my life forever. There's no doubt about that and helping me grow in many aspects of my life. And you know, when I first started this YouTube channel, I was very biased and had like this psychedelic warrior mentality thinking that it could solve all of life's problems. But as I gained more experience, not only in consuming psychedelics myself, but studying this topic extensively and talking to countless people who know a hell of a lot more than me and even reading fan messages that I get every day, my perspective on psychedelics is definitely more grounded and balanced than it was. And as time progresses, I've noticed an over-reliance that people have with these tools, including myself, of course, hence why I'm making this video. It's no secret that psychedelics can be amazing tools that can help accelerate your personal growth and pierce through this veil and experience reality with a completely new set of lens. And hey, don't get me wrong, this is a great thing, right? I mean, I'm so blown away by the power of psychedelics that I even dedicated a YouTube channel to this. So the question is like, why wouldn't we keep using them, right? Just before I go on, I just want to state that this channel is completely fan funded by you guys. So if you want to support this mission and what I'm doing, then check out Patreon, definitely the best way to do it. Or you could always get merch like this beautiful psilocybin molecule t-shirt. It's going to sneakily plug that in there. <laughs> Jeez, you're such a sellout, Tom. I'm sorry guys, I've got to feed myself somehow. Times are rough. As amazing as these tools can be, not many people know how to properly use them, unfortunately. And by this, I'm specifically talking about the preparation and the integration phase, which I would argue is at least 95% of the process. And most of us probably know that the integration phase is an important stage, but I want to emphasize truly how important this stage is. Since the inception of this channel, I've always been that guy who says like how important the integration phase is, yet I would go back to the psychedelic space prematurely with that properly integrating. So don't judge yourself if you're not integrating. We're human after all, right? Before I go on, let me state that there is no one true way to use psychedelics. So I'm not coming from a fundamentalist, purist point of view. There are many paths on top of the mountain which is tailored differently to each individual. I get that. I'm just a dude who's sharing my experiences and ideas. It's up to you guys what you want to do with that information. But what I do know is that if you don't embody and take action on the lessons and insights you have the privilege of getting from these incredible substances, then there's seriously not much point in using them, at least from a healing and personal growth perspective. You have to meet the medicine in the middle and integrate the experience in your everyday life. Psychedelics may open up the door for you, but you are the one who has to walk that path. So if you get an insight from a trip to do something like face a particular fear or to put yourself out there and finally start that business you've been putting off or change a certain behavior pattern or whatever it may be, but then for some reason you don't do it and you feel the need to jump back on the psychedelic train to like get more insights or maybe get more motivation to do the thing that you know you have to do, then this is the point where psychedelics become more of a distraction and a hindrance on your life. And man, the ego is one tricky son of a bitch. You gotta be really careful with it. Imagine going to university and you go on a class and you get all these homework and assignments that you have to do to pass the class, right? But all you do is rock up to the lecture and don't apply anything, but somehow expect to pass the class. It's not like the teacher's gonna do all the homework and assignments for you. You're the one who has to do it. The teacher acts as a guide and can direct you on what to study and what to do, but you have to do it. Otherwise you're gonna fail, you're never gonna progress, right? What's up? Well, that was quick. Did you already implement everything we talked about last time? Yeah, about that. I thought I needed more clarity and insights for my spiritual growth, you know what I mean? Mate, I've already been through this with you multiple times. You know what to do, stop stalling and fucking do it before I kick your ass. Shit, sorry man, I can't do anything about it now, I'm still here for another few hours. Oh, I see. Have you seen a new Rick and Morty? I personally fell into the trap thinking that psychedelics can help me more than it really could. And I'm starting to realize that psychedelics don't help people as much as they claim. And this is part of human nature, all right? We're always justifying our actions and exaggerating our belief systems. <laughs> it's what we do. And I'm finally starting to understand Alan Watts by what he meant when he said, once you get the message, hang up the phone. And you could argue that it's not a message, it's an ongoing dialogue, but... At the same time, this is a never ending rabbit hole, which I'll get onto later. There would be so many times where I would have this mystical experience 
and have these life-changing revelations about what to do with my life. And I'd be super pumped up and inspired, right? Like this common afterglow effect that people experience after taking psychedelics. The only problem with this is that it's usually temporary. And before you know it, you're back to your old ways, but now you just have a deeper awareness on what to do with your life. And this is the problem with taking psychedelics and not properly integrating. The more conscious you become of your unconscious behavior pattern, the more painful they become if you don't actually change them. It's like this painful karmic wave that just keeps coming back and hitting you stronger and stronger until you finally learn your lesson and break the cycle. Do you know how many destructive behavior patterns I used to have that took hitting rock bottom to finally change it? It's not worth it. It's better to do it now whilst it's less painful. Psychedelics will not save you if you're not willing to put in the work. And if you're not willing to put in the work, psychedelics can push you away from equilibrium more and more, especially when not taken in the right context. Like for example, my last aboga experience, which did a lot more harm than good in the short term, and this was because I didn't do it in the right environment, I didn't do it in the right set and setting. It's like going to the gym and working out with poor form with extremely heavy weights. You're gonna fucking injure yourself, you know what I mean? And you could say, hey man, there's no such thing as bad trips, only beneficial ones. <laughs> Again, this is something that I used to say all the time, and this is true to a certain extent, but there's a certain point where bad trips don't become beneficial anymore and can actually fuck you up in ways that you can't even imagine. You could say that this Aboga experience helped me grow in a very profound way, and that's true, but this is because I seeked help and integrated the experience. Well, I'm still integrating, but you know what I mean. And this wasn't easy. This was a very grueling, brutal process which put me in such a dark place. I just so happened to find the right people who had the skills to bring me back and ground that wisdom, which greatly helped me with this existential crisis. But many people don't have that privilege, you know what I mean? But I wanna make it clear, and this is an important point, that just because I grew and learned a lot from this experience, it doesn't mean that I could have received all these things without getting hurled into the abyss. In terms of continuously going back to the psychedelic experience, this isn't necessarily a bad thing because it really depends on your purpose. And it's not necessarily how many trips you have, but how deep you go and how prepared you are, which will determine how long the integration phase will realistically take. And not to mention that each substance is different and offers a unique perspective as well. Again, it all depends on your purpose with psychedelics and your unique personality and stage in life. Some people are cosmic explorers by heart, not necessarily doing it for personal growth, but more to explore the psychedelic headspace, which in that case can be totally appropriate to return to the psychedelic space, you know, like Terence McKenna, for example, as long as you're being brutally honest with yourself and it's not doing more harm than good. However, I would argue that most people who trip are just spiritually masturbating because the real work is in this reality, right? In your everyday life. And if you're looking for healing and personal growth, I don't think it's absolutely necessary to always take psychedelics. Usually one powerful trip is enough, you know what I mean? And hey, I fell into this trap of relying on these psychedelic tools as a crutch. And what I've learned the hard way is that it's very important to build the foundation of your mind and get the basic areas of your life covered instead of being in this healing mode all the time, which is a paradox. And I meet a lot of psychonauts who seek the psychedelic experience to grow and to heal, but then they're not willing to do the very simple changes in their life, like eating clean, exercising, meditating, working on their relationships, their passions, and building their life, facing their fears, etc. And this reminds me of something that Jordan Peterson says, who's a brilliant psychologist, do yourself a favor and check him out. But he goes, how do you expect to change the world if you aren't even willing to clean your own room? Like, you know what I mean? If you can't even bring yourself to meditate for five minutes a day, then you should not be fucking with psychedelics. And hey, I'm human too, right? I've broken all these rules. It's not like I have all these areas of my life 100% covered, hence why I'm not tripping again until I do. All I'm doing is inviting you guys to learn from my mistakes. Trust me, you don't want to learn the hard way because it's not as easy as curing, let's say, a hangover. This is a lot more serious than that. And it's funny because people have this misconception that I must trip all the time because I have this YouTube channel dedicated to drugs, but this is not the case at all. Not only haven't I tripped that often, but I don't even necessarily like to trip. <laughs> I have a very extreme personality, meaning that when I do something, I go all out. So when I first started this path of self-discovery, I wanted to find the most dramatic and quickest way to personal growth, right? So I flew to Peru and drank ayahuasca. I would fast for eight hours and take heroic doses of psilocybin mushrooms by myself at night. You know, like I do all this crazy shit, which is so unnecessary, 
But man, I've gone so deep with my trips. Like even one of my trips gives me enough content to work with for years, right? This is why I take massive breaks between trips. But what I've learned that it's the subtleties and the little changes in life which are much more profound over a long period of time. This is the compound effect and this is what's gonna get you long-term results in your life in any area. And this is something that we have to balance and which is one of the big reasons why I'm taking a huge, huge break from psychedelics. I'm focusing on doing the real work, finally. You don't always have to have a death by astonishment experience to gain wisdom. And again, I've learned this the hard way. And this is the same thing with your mind. You're going to get a lot more from meditating 10 minutes every single day over a long period of time than you are from tripping every once in a while. And you can use both these things to complement each other. Just don't let psychedelics fool you because they can be very enticing for beginners and give you beautiful, positive, mystical trips. But if you find yourself continuously returning to that space, you're going to find yourself in a never-ending rabbit hole and which can further confuse the fuck out of you and bring you to places that you don't want to go, right? And see things that you won't be able to unsee. And besides, psychedelics can be a lot more ruthless on veterans, at least from my own experience. Knowing is one thing, but living it is something else entirely. Any fool can trip and have revelations. We have everything that we need right here. <laughs> it's so cliche and hippie. We have everything we need right here, man, in our heart space. For those people who are immensely suffering from things like depression, anxiety, PTSD, or drug addiction, or any other debilitating mental illness, and you've tried everything in your power to try and overcome this, but nothing's worked, and you feel this very strong call to consume these psychedelic substances, then please, go for it. Don't get me wrong, psychedelics can be a life-saving raft that can save you from drowning. There's no doubt about that. All I'm saying is just don't expect anything, and don't fall into the trap of continuously returning when you don't need to. Like once you get what you need, integrate that shit, which can sometimes take a lifetime to achieve. I've met people who have spent months at an ayahuasca retreat, who have had hundreds of ceremonies, yet their life situation stays exactly the same. Just like I've met people who have had hundreds of trips and all different kinds of psychedelics, and yet they have these huge egos. It's like this really ironic thing. But it happens. And again, they aren't willing to do things like meditate or eat healthy. It's a consciousness expanding drug. If you don't have any consciousness, it can expand it. <laughs> Good old Terry, rest in peace. But for me, this is first hand proof that these tools do not do the work for you. They must be a complement to your life, not the be all and end all. It's almost like taking supplements but having a really horrible diet. But unlike supplements, which worst case scenario, they don't do much for you, psychedelics can really fuck you up for life. <laughs> you know, like in worst case scenarios. Jeez, it's like your party pooper, Tom. Just because you had a bad trip doesn't mean you have to ruin it for everybody else. You've changed, man. You'd be surprised, guys, but I get messages from people who have existential depression, depersonalization, HPPD, and all of these severely negative side effects after even just one psychedelic trip, you know? It happens. Just because you've had 100 trips and haven't been consciously aware of any negative side effects, it doesn't mean that A, it's not doing more harm than good, you're just not consciously aware of it, or B, that one day you will get that nightmare trip which can turn you off for life. And hey, maybe nothing bad can happen at all and you could literally trip for the rest of your life. But all I am saying is that it's not worth the risk. And I know that getting negatively affected by these tools is a very low percentage, but <laughs> if fuck man, if you get that roll of the die, it's... And at the end of the day, the potential dangers of psychedelics is so severe that it may not be worth exploring to get these positives that you can get without psychedelics. So once you get what you need, just ask yourself, is it absolutely necessary for me to jump back in? Have I integrated everything from my last trip? Have I done my homework? I had such a horrendous ayahuasca experience that I could have literally killed myself, like for real, if I wasn't in the right setting with people who were there to take care of me and I wouldn't be here talking with you guys right now. Like, scary shit, these, these things aren't to be played with. And trust me guys, I'm not doing this to like, scare you off or anything like that. And to be honest, if what I am saying really scares you away from these psychedelics and you don't want to do them now, then they're probably not for you anyway. But if you're one of those people who have a really strong feeling to do them and are com completely aware of the potential dangers 
and you feel the call and all that kind of stuff, then yeah, still go for it. You know, it's up, this is up to you at the end of the day. I don't know you or your specific situation. This is your call. So please don't let me tell you what to do, even though I'm just sharing my ideas on this corner of the internet. And again, please understand that I'm coming from a place of non-judgment. Like I've fucked up more than anybody, all right? Life will find a way to humble the fuck out of everybody. <laughs> even if I was to go the rest of my life without ever tripping again, please know that I am still very passionate about educating you guys on these substances as they fascinate me so much. Once you trip on mushrooms, you've opened up that part of your psyche forever and mushrooms will forever be with you from that point on. Same with ayahuasca, San Pedro, LSD, MDMA, whatever. And you can continue to get lessons from these substances without the physical use of them. Psychedelics are so much more powerful than what most people think. I just think the emphasis should be on living every day's life as this is the real ceremony. Right? This is where the real work comes in. But it doesn't hurt every once in a while as a rarity to be reminded of these altered spaces. All right, that feels good to get off my chest. That's what she said. If you guys have any video requests, please let me know below. Remember to like and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And if you want to contribute to this mission, then check out Patreon as this channel is completely fan funded by you guys. And again, you can always buy merch. These t-shirts give you special psychedelic powers which help you navigate through the in theogenic space. I just said a whole bunch of words that didn't make sense. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.